So welcome to this video where we're going to have a look at how we find the size of galaxies. So if you go and look up any galaxy, it will be given some size or you know, the diameter of that galaxy. And two examples here is the Sombrero galaxy, which is about 50,000 light years in diameter. The Whirlpool galaxy, which is about 76,000 light years. So you look, we get these diameters of the galaxies, which are in, they're enormous objects. But how do we actually get that diameter? What do we have to do to get that diameter of the galaxy? Well, the first thing we need to do is to measure the distance to the galaxy. We need to find how far away it is. So we define D, the distance to it. Now, there's actually quite a lot of ways you can do that when it comes to galaxies. And some are better than others. So if they're very close to us, we can use different methods, the ones we would use if they're very far away. So if they're relatively close, you can use surface brightness fluctuations. So this is basically looking at the resolution of the stars in the galaxy. So think about pixels in an image. The closer it is, the better resolution you have. And the further away they are, then the pixel to pixel variation gets smoother. So as, as you get further and further away, it, it basically appears smoother. And there's a relationship there we can use to work out the distance to the galaxy by how smooth the pixel to pixel variation is. The other way is to use variable stars. So there is a particular relationship with stars that change their brightness. If we measure the apparent magnitude of a star, these variable stars will increase in brightness, decrease in brightness, and they have a period in which they change their brightness. And they're very useful because there is a, a relationship between their period and their, abs their absolute magnitude. So if we plot the log period against the log absolute magnitude, we get something that looks a little bit like this. And what we can do is we can measure the period because we just watch the brightness of the star. We get that period that way. We can then look at the plot here, the relationship, and then we can calculate what its absolute magnitude is. And then we can actually get a distance to it because we would have the apparent magnitude. So we can figure out what the absolute magnitude is with this relationship. The apparent magnitude is what we would measure from Earth. And with those two, we can work it, the distance out in parsecs. Again, this, the galaxy has to be relatively nearby to do that, because picking out an individual star in a galaxy is going to be hard. Now, if they're a little bit further away, we can use type 1a supernova. So these type 1a supernova always explode with the same energy. So the absolute magnitude is always going to be the same. We know that. And all we have to do is measure the peak apparent magnitude, which is what we would see from Earth. And with those two things, again, we can work out the distance to the galaxy. So these are fairly useful for more distant galaxies because these supernova explosions are quite bright. And there's an example there and they can outshine whole galaxies. So they're very useful for more distant galaxies. And then for very far away galaxies, we can probably use the expansion of the universe. So if we have the Hubble constant, so that's the expansion rate of the universe, we can measure the redshift of the galaxy, which is essentially the Doppler shift. So if it's moving away from us, it's redshifted, we can work out our velocity. We can then use this relationship here. So the, the galaxy will be moving with some velocity away from us at some distance. As the distance increases, the velocity increases. So we can use that relationship to work the distance to the galaxy as well. Now, once we have the distance to the galaxy, we then only really need to measure the angular diameter. So this is the angular size of the galaxy in the sky as observed from Earth. This is fairly straightforward. So we get an angle then, basically, of how big it appears to be in the sky. And once we have that, we assume that it's obviously going to be a very small angle. It's probably going to be arc minutes or something like that. Then we basically use that relationship to get the distance, not the distance, to get the diameter, the actual linear di uh, diameter of the galaxy. So it's fairly straightforward to do. We just need to get the distance of the galaxy first. So thank you for watching.